Hi, my name is Richard Merritt and today I'm going to do an episode on fragrant hostas because it's the beginning of August and they're beginning to come into bloom in the garden. Host fragrant hostas are all descended from one species native to China that's Hosta plantigenea and they have some unique characteristics. One is that they tend to be more sun tolerant. They tend to be a little more heat tolerant. Obviously the fragrance as I spoke about. They also continue to grow during the summer where a lot of the hostas put out a flush of growth and then stop. Plantagenea tends to keep going. They actually look better on average than the other hostas during the summer. And if there's any hosta that grows best down south it's probably the Plantagenaeus. Uh, when I say Plantagenaeus, I mean anything descended from that. And those are the fragrant ones. So I'm going to show you some today, um, both what we sell, uh, some of the various characteristics. Obviously, it's all fragrant, but the leaf is different. On, so we have solid greens, solid uh, chartreuse, and some variegated um, with white in them and some really nice dark uh, variations of green, green. So this is Hosta plantigenea. It gets about probably 18 inches tall, very fragrant white flower, extremely large flower. And this is a sport called Double Up. It's a tetraploid sport of plantigenea. It has a slightly different scent to it, although I can't distinguish it. Uh, it's a little more compact and because it's a tetraploid it's a little bit slower growing and has a thicker leaf which most of the Plantagenea fragrant hostas have a fairly thin leaf. They tear a little bit in the wind and heavy rain and they're probably a little prone to slug damage but this is an exception uh, doubled up. This is holy moly. This is a, a really easy one to grow called guacamole. Very common, and very nice. I wanted to show you this because it's a group of three hostas together that makes it look like one big impressive clump, which is right for the size of the space. But I also want to show you in the upper right hand corner, there's some dark green leaves. And this is a sport of guacamole that has appeared and we'll dig it out and we'll either throw it away or if we think it has some value, we'll save it. But this is common for all hostas in that they sport into other forms. This is, this is one from way back when uh, was introduced in the 70s called Royal Standard. It's still on the market today. It's extremely sun tolerant and it's extremely fragrant and an easy grower. Uh, in the foreground, blooming heavily, is Lakeside Downsize, which is considered a small or a miniature. Uh, to the right front of Royal Standard is one of the liverworts, and in the very foreground is a heuchera for really nice color contrast. This is a blue Plantagenea fragrant hosta called Fragrant Blue. Fragrant blue is an exception to the rule of blue hostas in that it's actually partially sun tolerant. It's slightly fragrant, even though it's called fragrant blue, it only has a slight fragrance, but it has a little bit of the hosta plantigenea in its genetic background, which gives it the sun tolerance and the slight fragrance. So in closing, I just want to say that I hope I've encouraged you to try some of the fragrant hostas in your garden. It's a great addition to your August and September garden. Uh, great color, easy to grow, great fragrance. And there's one more thing I wanted to tell you about them is that they make a great cut flower. The fragrant hostas actually emerge about 4 p.m. as opposed to the majority of hosta flowers that open up at 7 a.m. Uh, we've put them in a vase on our retail table and uh, we find that they actually can last a week to 10 days. Uh, you keep pulling off the dead flowers and the new ones keep opening up. They really are uh, a great addition to your table. So thanks for watching and happy gardening.